These five drippers attempt to solve one very big problem. That is, making tastier coffee than the regular Kalita 185, the gold standard flat bottom single cup dripper in the specialty coffee world. Now, for the past several years, I've actually been using the December dripper. I think it brews tastier, fuller bodied, stronger, more balanced coffee than the Kalita Wave. So right off the bat, we're just saying that this is gonna be the thing to beat and see how these other four drippers stack up against the December dripper, right? So alongside the December dripper, we've got these other new four entries, but we'll start with the December dripper just to make sure we are all on the same page. It has a variable aperture, which has 12 holes that you can close and open all the way from complete closure, cutting off flow, four holes, eight holes, in 12 holes. That way you can have a variable flow rate or just set it at one constant flow rate like I do. I have it all the holes open and we just go from there. Moving on to the next dripper, looking at the Fellow Products Stag X, which has a 10 hole pattern, almost in like a star. And this is a much steeper, narrower brewer and it also is vacuum insulated. Their big pitch for this is that, hey, make hotter coffee, make it stronger, and make it steeper and potentially more even than something like the wide mouth of the December Dripper or the Kalita Wave. Then, taking a look at the proprietary Blue Bottle Dripper, which takes its cues just from a regular flat bottom brewer or even a batch brewer, because it has these almost capillary structures inside to supposedly guide the coffee through the rest of the grounds and the water, make sure that everything is saturated. Whenever they announced this product originally, they claimed that the design was inspired by how trees are able to, to distribute water. So we'll see how that stacks up. Moving on to this, you might say, hey, that looks like a cone very clearly. Well, this is the origami brewer. And what's fascinating about this is it actually can take Kalita Wave filters, which are flat bottom, but it also can take Hario filters. So. Uh, not what we're testing today, but you have great flexibility with this brewer to be able to use the two most common types and get a very different cup depending on how you're doing a simple brew with this. But after being used to win in the World Brewers Cup, this thing has shot up in popularity. And finally, as I'm going to link the first look video to this below. This again is the Espro Bloom. It's a new brewer where you've got 1,502 laser etched holes like a portafilter basket in the bottom to essentially have no restriction of flow at all, but keep the filter up nice and tight. So for the first test, the goal is trying to see what are each of these drippers and filters doing to the coffee itself. So I went with one common grind size, same dose and same pouring pattern for all five drippers and compared the cups. So let's start taking a look at that now. To be clear, this test today is not attempting to answer the question of which of these is the best overall. What we're really just trying to see is how would each of these drippers behave with the same exact grind, same exact coffee, and same exact brew. That's the real test, and in terms of trying to get the best out of each dripper, you're gonna have to like and subscribe to both this video and the channel to see the rest of the series that is coming out soon. Today is just a, an entry point outside of the already shot video for the Espro Bloom. Want to make sure that you're able to see all of the videos in total with as much information as possible. Thank you. The coffee used was a Colombian. I roasted to a little bit past what you would define as a traditional light roast. Really with a Colombian coffee, I want to make sure that I'm actually developing everything and trying to avoid the unpleasant nutty acidity that I really tend to dislike about Latin coffees in general and especially with Colombians. So this is just inside of what many people may consider to be a medium roast. I still think it's very flavorful. There is no roast or ash flavor imparted into the bean. It's a fantastic sweet spot and a good test coffee. As you can see in these pictures, a 22 gram dose sits very differently depending on the filter and the dripper used. The pouring pattern for each of these was identical and they were done in groups of two. Had multiple Hario thermal servers on hand for this exact test, two different scales. So I brewed them in groups of two and then I brewed the Espro as the, the final brew just by itself and was able to save them all, taste them next to each other and of course get the TDS readings and calculate extraction. When I was blooming the coffee, wanted to do roughly three times the weight in water. so. 
I got between 66 to 70 grams of water in each of the drippers right off the bat to make sure that we we're able to get all of the coffee soaked, make sure that we could get as much gas out as possible without starting the extraction in an unreasonable way. That's why I like the three times metric instead of maybe two or even one. And after that, moved on to four pours, about 75 grams for each of them, all the way up to 375 grams total for all of the water brewed. Now, retention was nearly identical between them. There was only a about two gram variance in total between the different drippers, which I thought was pretty interesting, but hey, they're all relatively using the same shape. The grind size is the same, so it makes sense that it, there really wasn't much variance there. For each of the pours, I was not timing it after the bloom. The pours were initiated whenever the top layer of grounds in the bed would start to become dry. That way I could ensure that there wasn't a unnecessary water column on top of each of them. I wanted to make sure that water was at least going through the coffee in good even increments across all of the brews. So as you can tell from these clips, I ended with a nice flat bed on all five drippers. Really wanted to ensure that these were as close to being identical as possible. All right, so what were the results? Well, going from weakest all the way to strongest, uh, coming in last in terms of strength was the Espro Bloom. The extraction yield was 19.48%. Then came the Stag, which was 20.07%. The December, 20.37%. And here's where the other two really started to pull away from the pack. The Blue Bottle was 22.59%. And the Origami was 23.03%. So yeah, a very wide range, almost 4% total difference in extraction yield and remember that essentially has no restriction but neither does this so what gives so a couple notes in terms of tasting as far as each of them so I thought that the bloom was crisp and a clean finish and it was slightly sweet stag actually had the most acidity it was much more pronounced than the others it was still balanced and crisp but uh, it really stood out for having acidity I don't know why then the December was where acidity started to drop. There was a much more pronounced coffee flavor. All of the generic back notes that you think of in a cup really started to pop out a bit more right here. And that specific dynamic of the cup didn't really fade with either of these or really get any stronger. Uh, the blue bottle is where sweetness really started to enter the picture. These cups were very syrupy and sweet and uh, jammy. I, I really enjoyed that. And on top of that, uh, the origami, it maybe had a little bit fluffier body. It's a, almost an imperceptible textural difference that was slightly bigger. I, I don't know if I could tell these two apart or if I would even really have a preference. At that point, that's a, a very delicious cup in terms of the strength that I tend to like and just how it was brewed from these cups. So, as I mentioned before, if this has no restriction and neither does this, how did they end up with a four-point differential on yield here? Well, there's a couple things to look at. First, I want to take a look at the actual dynamics of the different beds. So, if we're looking at these, these are considerably different in terms of, you know, how wide or narrow that they are. I mean, so looking at the actual coffee in the bed, I decided to measure, you know, from edge to edge, from the inner folds of the filters on each, uh, just how wide the actual pouring area was. And that started to make things a bit more clear. The Bloom and the Stag both had a, about a five centimeter bed on top. December is where it moved into six. Blue Bottle also is six centimeters. And the Origami at the widest was actually seven centimeters on average. So a very wide difference there. And it, it's funny that the two that were the tallest and most narrow and most even actually had the, the weakest cups. So. What does any of this actually mean, though? It was just one grind size, but in terms of trying to, to boost the yield on these, the real question becomes, am I grinding too coarse or too fine? With this, the water rushes through the ground so fast that uh, I'm inclined to want to grind finer, but there's definitely a certain point, as I've discovered, where you can grind too fine and extraction yield drops, just like an espresso. Uh, with the stag, I'd always heard rumors over the years that these are kind of prone to choking. So do I really want to go finer? This was already a fairly fine grind for this in particular, and even for the December. So 
Uh, December, we had, remember, the 12 holes open all the way, and the flow was fairly balanced. And same thing with the blue bottle dripper, which again has just the, the one single hole, but the capillary system must do something. But what about the seemingly total lack of restriction on the origami? Well, I think there actually is restriction. Here's why. On all of these drippers so far, these first four, the folds are of the cupcake style flat bottom filter actually make them pop off of the sides to allow some degree of air to allow flow to go you know, through the grounds faster and not just choke out. But with this, the Kalita wave filters would perfectly start to fit in to a degree, not, not quite perfect, but they would just slot in there and just stick to the walls. So the flow from this wasn't actually as fast as you might expect. Now, is there a best way to make coffee with each of these? I mean, there are some incredible devotees of a couple of these brewers. You know, how, the Stag has a lot of fans in high places. The Espro Bloom is a new contender that also has some very vocal proponents. And hey, I mean, the origami was used to win the Brewers' Cup. Nick Cho developed this again explicitly with the aim of you know trying to improve upon the original base design. And got to give him credit for that. Him and Youngmin Lee over in Korea. And Blue Bottle, they designed their own drippers for their own shops. That's an incredible amount of R&D that they went through, and the results really speak for themselves in, in terms of you know at least being able to get a strong, balanced, flavorful cup. So yeah, that's the first look, looking at one grind, one brew style, one coffee for all of these drippers. If you haven't already, please remember to like the video, please subscribe. This continual dripper, dripper series is going to be coming up in the next couple of weeks and months going on. There is one more dripper on the way, at least for this batch per se, and I look forward to bringing you more of these soon. Thank you.